luck be a landlord all symbols tier list since version 1.0 is out i thought i'd give my thoughts on what i think are the best and worst symbols in the game i know a lot of you have been looking forward to this video i will be ranking these on one major criteria i'm going to be ranking symbols based on their ability to help you win a run of luck be a landlord on apartment floor 20 assuming you use them optimally now i'll be talking about how to use each of these symbols optimally as well let's start with the amethyst the amethyst cannot be buffed by that many things it's got the dame it's got the light bulb and it's got arrows and buffing capsule and i wouldn't really count on much of the last few when you pick a rare you generally want something that can improve your setup by itself and the amethyst is the opposite it needs other things to improve it so the only time you really want to take an amethyst is if you already have a dame and then it's a pretty good pick, but it's rare to have a dame in the first place. I would never take this symbol in anticipation to get something else. So I'm going to put it in D tier. Anchor is one of the best commons for early game. Assuming you have 20 or fewer symbols in your deck, this symbol is worth 1.8. So anytime you see this in the early game, you want to pick it. First two or maybe sometimes three rent cycles, but generally first two. Plus it has an easy way to pivot out with diver and sometimes pirates. I wouldn't count on that though. Otherwise it's doesn't have any synergies but just being a dominant early game symbol one of the best self-sufficient commons you can take puts it into b tier for me apple is a rare threeper that needs other rares in order to be good obviously it's going to be buffed by chef or farmer but if you have neither then there's no reason to take an apple it can be eaten by robin hood but robin hood only gives something like 10 or 12 which might be worse than leaving the apple alive i suppose there's also witch which is not something I would count on. And it doesn't have the capability to increase its value like Strawberry does. So it's pretty unexciting. I'd say it's slightly worse than Amethyst. Banana Peel has one legitimate use, and that's getting rid of thieves. If you take a naked thief and you're desperate to get rid of it, yeah, it's fine. And thieves are better destroyed by Zoffs or Bounty Hunters anyway. It's a pretty terrible symbol. Banana is not much better. It's a one per. I guess it can buff Mrs. Fruit, but then it leaves behind a terrible symbol. Can be eaten by Monkey, but also leaves behind a terrible symbol. Generally, taking this means you're going to have some awful symbol on the field for the next couple rent cycles, and that's not good. I mean, it's better than the peel, but it's no good in the first place. Borrow Soap is a really nice early to mid-game symbol. Everything about it destroys itself, so it's just basically a delayed short burst of money. The fact that it's non-committal means that it's often nice to take in the early to mid game even better if you have a toddler or a goldfish laying around that can give you extra profits from it the perfect moment to take it is when there's four empty symbols left in your deck you might as well fill them up with something and it's so non-committal they give you the money and then they run i'd probably still put it below anchor i'm more excited to see an anchor than a bar of soap bartender is awfully fun to get going bartender dwarf synergy and can be a great pivot out of a dwarf start although a dwarf start isn't so great for reasons i'll get into later i think the best upside of the bartender is actually that it makes chemical sevens since they don't need a dwarf to destroy themselves and making martinis is okay too but if this thing starts making beers you're in for a bad time then you gotta take a dwarf and the dwarf clogs up your deck as a one per just to get rid of other one purs for a small drinking bonus wines are okay but i definitely wouldn't recommend it if you got some other type of build going it's just gonna clog up your deck but if you do get happy hour it can be a very nice asset if you happen to have a dwarf around it could be a fun and workable synergy sometimes you can build a run off of it so i'll put it in c it's definitely more fun than good though bear is another symbol that's more fun than good but that's a high bar because i think it's really fun Fun. There's just something nice about it, given 35 for the Honeyus and more with the Maxwell the Bear item. The fact that it's uncommon with a really big upside is an awesome aspect of the bear. Because you can take him early to mid game, be happy about him, and then build around him in the late game by getting beehives, beast masters. And even when it doesn't pan out, it's not the biggest deal because the time you take him is generally early to mid game when just having a tuper is perfectly fine. I think I'm willing to put him above the anchor right now. Best symbol so far. Until we come to the Beastmaster. Yeah, this guy's great. You pick him up as a rare and there's so much he synergizes with. In the early game, you're going to pick up like two or three animals at least. Dogs, chickens. I mean, there's so much you would want in the early game, which then gets buffed by Beastmaster. If you get this guy early, it's great. You can get multiple of them, keep buffing stuff. It has high value targets like Eldritch Creature as well. There's so many ways to buff the values of animals for them to then be further buffed by Beastmaster. It's also a very easy build to make. There's always going to be a target for this guy. He's 
definitely S tier. I've won so many runs with them. Beehive is another phenomenal symbol. It's a threeper that makes threepers, which can then be eaten by the bear if you happen to have it or both it and its product are buffed by the bee, just making for a really interesting build. I think the beehive is the main engine in it. Now it is specific, but I don't think I've ever regretted taking a beehive. Every time I've taken, I've made it work. So I guess I got to put this in S tier. I think this makes me reconsider bear as well. I've never been disappointed with a bear. I think I'm willing to bump this up to A tier. B is also something that's hard to be disappointed in. It's only disappointing if it only works with flowers. It's a great early game symbol, because if you buff the flower, the bee is effectively a threeper in that moment. And the odds of buffing a flower in the early game are about one fourth, one fifth maybe. So that definitely puts it above average for early game symbols. And then it can help out the beehive bear strategy. And of course, if you get a sun, having the bee to double that is quite impactful. Turning a five into a 10 should give just as much credit to the bee as it does the sun. However, there are a lot of times where the bee just doesn't work out and I have to remove it along with the flower mid to late game. And I was wishing that it was gone earlier. So it definitely puts it below the bear. I'm gonna probably put it fittingly in the B tier. I used to think beer was good. Then I quit drinking for 18 months. But in this game, it's not much better. I mean, it has the obvious dwarf synergy, but if a dwarf drinks it, it gives it 10 money, which has pretty much no purpose outside the earliest of early game. If you have this in mid game, that means before the beer is drank, you have two one purs in your deck when you generally want, well, three purs, to be honest. Even with happy hour, it's not that exciting to get a beer. It's only gonna pay out 20, and that's if the stars align. I would never take this in anticipation of getting a dwarf either. As the pirate drinks, that's probably its best use, but getting a pirate is not common. But because it's pirate food, that is enough for me to put it above the bananas. Big Ore has one real purpose, and that's feeding a geologist. Sometimes it's okay as a desperation Tooper when you need to add some value to your deck. But generally, it's just going to sit there being worth two. There is Kyle the Kernet that can buff it to three, and that's it. And of course, it's nice if you get one of those uncommon or rare items that actually have good things come out of the big ore, but that's definitely not worth counting on. If you take it, the most likely outcome is for it to just sit forever as a twoper in your deck until you remove it or find a geologist. Because if you break it with a miner, the miner gets a little bit of money, but then it's probably going to drop a pearl and a sapphire or a pearl and a shiny pebble, which may makes your deck worse than having the big ore. However, it's generally a plus three to your geologist, so that alone is enough to put it in bottom D tier. Big Urn has a similar feature, where it's generally a twoper and only sometimes broken. However, when it's broken, it pays out a lot of money and really fast. Two spirits is 48 money over four turns. And the fact that you could break this with an item, Grave Robber, pretty consistently is nice. And Hooligan itself isn't a terrible symbol. It's certainly not life-changing, but it's okay in the right circumstance when you just want a little bit extra money in the mid game. I'll put that at low C. Billionaire is a very one dimensional symbol. You either have a guillotine or you don't. If you have a guillotine, it's great. 39 free money, awesome. If you don't, well, don't take it. I will say when I have the guillotine, I'm pretty happy to see him. The issue is taking the guillotine item is not something you're gonna wanna do often. Generally, there's items that'll pay off way better than this combo. So in a way, I have to take the guillotine item into consideration when it comes to rating this. And I think because of how polarizing it is, either it's incredible or a skip just kind of puts it in C tier. I actually think below bartender's fine. Bounty hunter is just a slightly better thief catcher. When it's a one per that's that one dimensional, you can't get excited over it. It's just gonna clog up your deck while you wait for thieves. You'll pretty much only want this if you want a naked thief, and even then, it's not as exciting as Zaroff. And the one upside of the banana peel compared to this is when the banana peel catches a thief, it goes away. This guy stays around, so he's down there. Bronze Arrow is excellent. It's an uncommon that will be useful at all phases of the game. You always want to multiply the value of your symbols. Even with it egregiously pointing off the board pretty frequently, it is on average a net positive. It also does, as opposed to my previous belief, get better the more bronze arrows you have, just because of the uh, value of multiple bronze arrows pointing to the same symbol. But the scaling value of it is wonderful. It's pretty much one of the best uncommons out there. Definitely S tier. Bubble's a nice inoffensive symbol. Always a good early game pick because it never clogs up your deck. Downside is you don't want it too early because generally you actually want to clog up your deck as in get rid of the empties and replace them with consistent money. Six money total is what you'll get from this if you don't have much of synergy, which is pretty low. But this is an okay staple of early game runs, putting it at a C.
buffing capsule rarely feels bad to take, except I've been getting it in corners a lot lately. It shows up, it gives you free money, and then it leaves. What's not to love? I'll put that above a bear. Candy gets eaten by a toddler, and that's about it. It's got the jack-o'-lantern item, and it can be buffed by chefs. Its ceiling is not very high. I would never take this without a toddler, but toddlers are pretty good, so sometimes I guess I'd take it if it's the first thing offered to me. But in the early game, if I were offered a candy and a bubble at the same time, I would definitely take a bubble because it's non-committal. I don't want to have to rely on getting another symbol just to make this one good. Card Shark is awesome to see once you're going suits, but how often are you going suits really? Ever since red suits and black suits don't really mingle with each other, they become a less attractive build. The main value of Card Shark is if your suits build failed, this guy can at least save you. And suits builds do fail often. So I see it as having a decent upside, but it's extremely rare. Is it rarer than Amethyst upside? I guess it is. But it also depends on how you play. I just don't really like playing suits. So I'm a little biased on this one. Cat is probably the most versatile common symbol. I mean, you got Pizza the Cat, you got Lucky Cat, you got Black Cat, then you got Witches, you got Milks with Cows, you got Beastmasters. There are so many ways to take a cat and then make it good later. Sure, sometimes you don't hit any of them, but it always feels good to get it. Not to mention Copycat, and of course, all the essences related to that. It just seems wonderful. I would take it over a B in early game. I think it's good enough to be A tier just because of how many runs have eventually revolved around cats. And we're starting to see a theme here. The more good ways you can use a symbol, the better it generally is. It decreases the chance of you taking it and then it clogging up your deck, losing you the run. Cheese only really has one use and that's feeding a mouse. The mouse does get 15, but it's not that great. It's definitely better than a beer, because 15 is more than 10, but I wouldn't count on cheese ever. Chef, however, has a lot of things it can buff. By the time you get your first rare, you will have probably two or three fruits. There's a lot of two per th fruits that are worth taking in mid game because of chef. And it's really easy to build around multiple chefs. There's also a farmer, which buffs the same thing Chef does, which can help it scale further. If you get a Chef, it's really easy to make a fantastic run around it. So I'll put it in S tier, probably below Beastmaster though. Chemical 7 is great. It shows up, it gives you 7 money, and then it leaves. If you get 3 of them, it gets 77. If you happen to get 3 Chemical 7s, then the average value of the 3 7s is 32. But you're not always going to get 3. I mean, you have to weigh that against the times you only get one or two chemical sevens but they're uncommon they can be made by bartender show up in lunchbox the odds of getting three are semi-decent i would say if it's a 50 percent chance to get three chemical sevens then its actual value is something close to 16. buffing capsules generally better late game so i'd put it just below buffing cherry is one of the first things i love to get rid of once i get my removal capsules it's a one per that has mrs fruit outs and very minor chef farmer outs. As the extent of its value, most of the time I just want it gone. I would never willingly take this unless if there's a missed fruit. And a lot of the time, I sometimes don't even if I have her. So it's definitely way too slow in the late game. Okay in the mid game with Mrs. Fruit terrible in the early game, but because of the Mrs. Fruit synergy, I put it at high F tier. You can sometimes build around a chicken. It's got the farmer and beastmaster buffs, but most importantly, the items. Stuff like birdhouse, chicken coop. There's the egg carton, which is great with chicken because I could just lay eggs and then create money that doesn't take up space on the board. I wouldn't say I'm ever thrilled to get a chicken going, but I've noticed a lot of the times that I've taken one, it's just happened to work out. Oh, and of course, if you can get frying pan with chicken, then you're in good business. Because frying pan is all about wanting you to lay eggs, which can turn into omelets. And that's a strong, strong strategy. So because of that, I'd put it higher than bartender. Chick is just chicken, but slower. It basically has all the properties, except it takes a while to get there. Not much more to say because of that. Clubs is strength in numbers. It's not bad to take a suit if it's your first uncommon offered and the other options are two crummy hexes. But the vast majority of the time you try to go for suits, you will be stuck with like two or three of them. It's not reliable. Sure, when it works, it's really good but most of the time i've tried to take suits i have been shat on i will put it in low d tier cole is a good early game symbol if you already are reasonably above ahead of your rent payments obviously don't take this if you're trying to pinch every single penny but the fact that 
it grows into a diamond as a common is great. In the 20 spins it takes to grow, you do lose out on some money, especially in the mid game from opportunity cost, where you would have other symbols giving money in its place. But the diamond pays off quickly, and more often than not, you'll want to take this early enough so that it just replaces an empty so there is no opportunity cost. Smart play, I think, puts coal into a B tier. It's just a really good way to transition from a very strong early game to a very strong mid game. Coconut half is meant to be eaten, either by monkey or especially Mrs. Fruit. It doesn't get buffed by farmer. It doesn't get buffed by chef though. So the strategy isn't that deep. You just get it eaten and you'd be happy for the money pays out over time. Where you can take a coconut half in anticipation for a monkey or a Mrs. Fruit, you cannot take a coconut in anticipation for Monkey or Mrs. Fruit. This is worth two, this is worth one. Having a one person in your deck hoping you find one of two symbols is dreadful. But if you do get either one of them, the payoff is higher. So it's a bit more of a risk or reward, which I consider to be a bad thing in this game, despite its name and presentation. While this can be buffed by a farmer, it only brings it to the power of a coconut half. And it feels terrible to get an uncommon worth one in the early game. Coconut half at least has that early game take ability. This does not, putting it in the D tier. Coin is something you want to get rid of ASAP. Sure, it's nice to get coin on a string or coin on a string essence to get money from removing it. Or it's nice to have a pirate eat it otherwise it's not that good triple coin is generally too late you generally have removed the coin by the time it shows up if it does show up congrats as a three per that's still mediocre there is a reason why there is a hex whose downside is adding a coin to your inventory it's that bad probably worse than bounty hunter comedian is only as good as the symbols it buffs as you can see banana and banana peel are quite low the rest haven't showed up yet but the majority of them will be low top there is probably the best of the bunch because it's a good early game symbol and comedian is a good way to transition out dog is also good partly because dogs have their own benefits but also if it's next to the comedian it does give six and of course there's also the joker but joker is rare generally you want a rare that can help you do well on its own still is the three per on its own and and sometimes you have the symbols laying around that it can help out. In the mid game, it's never bad to take a comedian, but I would never force a build around him. Sometimes the stars align, but I'll leave it at that. The cow can be an interesting one. It's best used if you have a cat strat going, so the cats can get absurd value from multi drinking the milk. Got good farmer synergy, beastmaster synergy, but most of the time when you take a cow, it's milks are just gonna clog up your deck. If you have one cat, it'll take too long for it to drink it. And if your cat doesn't have any buffs, then the payout won't even be that high and you'll have multiple one pers clogging your deck. But there is a sweet spot in the early mid game. Like if it's your first rare or shows up earlier than your first rare, that it can be fine. Cause you'll generally have a cat then, sometimes even have empty spaces and a three per will be better than the rest of your build. But mostly because of the existence of the cat, I'd say it's definitely better than Amethyst, but not by much. Crabs are probably something I overtake. They're fun, and it's always cool when you can get the crab rave going. But most of the time, I take one crab, sometimes get a second, and then sputter out. The saving grace of the crab is that it gets eaten by the diver. There's a way out. The build can be saved, and that alone is quite good. And if you happen to get the crabs going, they can be accelerated by Beastmasters. So all in all, I consider it to be decent. I would say it's worse than Anchor. Is it better than Coal? Lately, I would say no. It might even be worse than Bar of Soap as well, but it's definitely better than Chicken. It feels right for the crab. If it's your first symbol offered, most of the time you should take it. Sometimes you'll get lucky, but a lot of the time you're praying to get built out by a diver or maybe Beastmaster. Crow is plain garbage. Its uppiest upside is getting buffed by Birdhouse and Beastmaster, but even if that were the case, you would probably want any other bird. This is only a little bit more than a one per, but it doesn't have a way to remove itself from your deck, and it doesn't really have a way to give you a burst of money either. I'd say it's worse than the coin. Cultist is crabs, but less fun. It is more consistent. If you get three cultists, you're way happier than if you get three crabs. And it has the pivot of the eldritch creature later, but eldritch is rare. There isn't a people buffer, like an animal buffer that Beastmaster is. So because of that, it's much less flexible. Also, having one cultist sucks as it's worth zero and generally one of the first things to go from your deck. Just the ability to be absolutely miserable after you only get one or two cultists is enough to put it in D tier for me. Dame's got that uh, buffing ability. Anything that can 2x nearby symbols is quite good. And there's generally a few stones you're going to have out when you get a dame. It's definitely something you can build around. Gems 
or less common though than fruits and animals. So I wouldn't put it as high as Beastmaster or Chef, but I would put it above a Bronze Arrow. You can build around it very cleanly and easily. Actually, Dame can't be S tier because the things that you want to buff are generally rare and above. More often than not, it is gonna be coals into diamonds. But I can see a lot of times where if it comes up early, and you only have a pearl, maybe a sapphire, you take a dame and then you don't really improve. So the fact that it can disappoint you probably does put it to just high A tier. In fact, I would say the diamond is better than the dame because diamonds are self-synergizing and they're already worth a lot without the help of anybody and they incentivize you to then get dames. Of course, it's very rare so you don't see it often, but when you see it, it's really damn good. I would say it's still below chef though, just because of how much chef can do. But out of the times I see diamond, I pick it like 95% of the time. Speaking of diamonds, I mean, it's identical to clubs. So there's not much more to say. Diver, my first good eater. Diver has become one of my favorite eaters lately because its ability to eat jellyfish, and puffer fish and sand dollars, which all give bonuses when eaten, especially the jellyfish. Getting removal capsule for free out of that, phenomenal. It helps you pivot out of bad early games. It eats one of the starting symbols. Yeah, this guy's phenomenal. Put him right here. Dog's main benefit is turning into a wolf with Quigley the wolf, which is quite good. It's a four per on its first time, then a three per afterwards. Has comedian synergy, like I mentioned earlier. It's not terrible early game, because you'll generally take a face, then the dog can at least become a two per in the meantime. A common symbol that becomes a three per with just a single item, fantastic. The idea behind it is same as billionaire, but it's definitely better than billionaire. Also better than chicken, and I'll leave it there. Dove is not something I've really figured out. There are times where you want doves to keep things alive, like in the case of a lucky capsule. Other times where dove being out of the field will do you more harm than good, like essence capsule or any one purrs that are being eaten. Dove is usually a win more symbol. I wouldn't try to build around this thing. And if you get it as your first rare, it is definitely disappointing. I'll put it below Apple. The dwarf. Let's talk about what the dwarf can do. It can drink a beer, which is probably the biggest upside because it gets an F tier symbol out of your deck. Gives you 10 money. It could drink a wine, which is generally bad. Wine is an uncommon that can become a three per, and that's it. Otherwise, it just sits in your deck as a one per. Dwarven Anvil is good, not because of the ability to eat ores, no. Uh, it's because it makes them 2x, but that doesn't justify it. I would only barely put it above the beer. And honestly, they look cute together, so I'll leave it. Egg... It's just the delayed chick and chicken with the upside that it can be inserted directly into the egg carton. I would actually say there's more times that I prefer seeing the egg than the chick. Egg carton's one of them. The other one being frying pan because that can more quickly turn into an omelet without having to risk turning into a chick than waiting to become a chicken so I can lay more eggs. So I would actually put it above the chick, below the chicken. There's something to be said about the potential of a child being better than the child itself but I'll leave it at that. Eldritch Creature is great if you can find it. It is very rare and less impactful than the diamond, but it can be fed into. The downside of feeding the Eldritch Creature is you gotta think about what you're feeding it, right? You can take a cultist to feed it, but it'll take a good number of spins before it eats the cultist and the cultist will clog up your board as a zero per in the meantime. And the hexes could sow absolute chaos while they're on the field. Creating coins, destroying symbols, ruining your luck odds, skipping your selections, forcing you to take something bad. So Eldritch is best if you happen to have those things already on the field and if you want them gone. And which is often better on the field than in the Eldritch's belly. But it is still a naked forper that can get better, especially if you have idle removal capsules. I would place it above a dame. And that's because, right, I would say I pick Eldritch Creature at least 85% of the time I see it. Maybe 90. Emerald is not that much different from Apple. The only difference is if you have two Emeralds, they're worth four. And if you have two Apples, they're worth sadness. But it is self-sufficient. It can help out a Dame build. It's fine, but there are many rares I would take over it. If I get this in an early Lucky Capsule, I will sometimes reroll. I think right above Amethyst works for me. Essence Capital is a tough one, right? I think the average Essence pick is worth more than the 12 coins it costs, but it does cause some variance. That being said, there are some Essence picks that are wonderful. I mean, some that pay off for 60, some that can pay off way more than 60 over the course of a game. That can be really, really good. I think I'd put it above Buffing Capsule. Of course, don't take it if you're really close to making rent, but if you're doing great in the mid game and are unsure about your late game, 
Essence Capsule is wonderful. Farmer is basically chef. I mean, they're adjacent uh, professions. Farmer can hit flower, cow, but I think on average, chef hits more things than the farmer. Still really, really good. I would just put it slightly below farmer. Five-sided die is an uncommon that's worth three right from the get-go. The amount of times I've taken this in the early game has been wonderful. I mean, you just get so much more money than this compared to other uncommons, which will add up over the course of the game. Sure, there's no real way to pivot from it. I guess you could get lucky dice or re-roll. Relying on those items isn't great, but the actual value you get from having this early compared to one purse or two purse is subtle, but incredible. I'll come out to like plus 40 money over the course of the game, which I think puts it right in between essence and buffing. But a lot of the times I actually will take a five side die over an essence early. So I guess with that direct comparison, I could put it here. Flower is something I love to get rid of early game, but I do admit sunflower is great. It's a very one dimensional build. Either you get the sun or you don't because flowers aren't going to work without a sun. I would never take a flower unless I had a sun or if I had like 10 rains. So most of the time I just want this gone, but I do have to admit when it works, it really works. So I'm willing to put it at low C tier. Frozen fossil is way too slow. Sure, you can happen to speed it up if there's some hexes or cultists gone, but it's a rare that takes 20 turns to do anything. Generally, when you get your first rare, you want it to pay off right away so you can deal with the rapidly increasing rent prices and you're going to have a full board 90% of the time. So it is going to replace a worse symbol uh, from coming up as opposed to coal, which you can get when there's still plenty of empties on the board and the coal becomes a better symbol than the frozen fossil. Of course, it's good to get if you already have had an Eldritch creature going. It's easy to have this pop off and it becomes an instant good value thing, but that's rare. I honestly think this is low D tier. The only good scenario is if you already have an Eldritch creature and if it's gotten rid of some hexes and cultists and that sort of thing. Gambler is nice solely because he removes himself. He gives you money and then he stops clogging your deck. The synergies are some really good symbols. Both the five-sided and the three-sided die are near the top of their respective rarities. So you'll generally get money off this guy. Now it's not gonna be much. He's basically a three-per, which eventually goes away. But Reapers are good for commons. I would not recommend taking naked gamblers, as in gamblers without three-sided or five-sided dice, unless if it's extremely early. Because you really want to only take those dice in the earliest of early game, where they actually give relative value. So I'll put them as just better than a crab. General Zoth, the mid-game king. Sometimes you got a lot of terrible faces you want to get rid of in the early game. Don't have a convenient way to do it, so you hire Zoth. He acts as three or four free removal capsules. It gives you 60 or 80 money. And then hopefully you are able to remove him before adding a good rare face. Also side, the chicken package is a little bit lower than I was giving it credit for. I'd put it closer to here. Because I would say Zoroff is better than a chicken and worse than a billionaire. I would never take Zoroff unless I needed a few emergency removal capsules. Next up is the Geologist, probably the best eater in the game. I mean, he gets rid of the terrible pearl at the start of the deck, the shiny pebble, which was only okay in the beginning and then starts becoming awful. Gets rid of Sapphire, which is just mediocre. But his main strengths are getting rid of the small and big ore. Those can scale the geologist so fast. Don't even get me started about the golem too. I mean, that's a guaranteed plus 10. Maybe not guaranteed. Sometimes you get void stones or amethyst to come out of the stones. Doesn't change the fact that this guy is an incredibly good eater. Definitely better than diver. Probably worse than beastmaster though, because beastmaster can single-handedly win you a game. Where geologist is just a single powerful symbol. You can still lose with this guy if the rest of your deck sucks. Golden Arrow is gonna make it so it's impossible to suck. This guy is just probably the goat. Sure, when you take him, he's gonna point off the field a lot of the time, but when he's at the edge and points into the middle, 4xing four symbols, I mean, that's incredible value. It works with everything. There isn't a single symbol that's actively bad with a golden arrow. There are situational reasons that you would take other symbols over golden arrows, but that's all you have. Just situational things. Like if you have a moon wolf build, a ton of wolves, sure you take a moon because it's way more consistent, but the golden arrow in a vacuum is probably the best pick you can make. I grab this 99.5% of the time at least. Golden egg. It's a rare worth four. Not many game-breaking synergies with it, but being a rare that's worth four is at least better than average. And sometimes you get some sort of chef synergy with it. 
Goldfish is best to put in the goldfish bowl, but otherwise good at popping bubbles in the early game. It's basically a mouse in that regard. It can also be pivoted out of by being eaten by diver. So that's worth something. I'll put it at high D tier. Golem is pretty much a geologist mass feeder and that's it. But when you have a geologist, it is wonderful. So I'll put it here in C tier. Goose is a one fur that sometimes drops a golden egg. I wouldn't count on it. In the average game, it doesn't even lay an egg, so I'm gonna leave it right here. Hearts, I've basically gone over. Hexes are pretty much all terrible. Hex destruction's probably the worst of them all. I mean, it's just uncalculated chaos. It's fun, but it's generally gonna make your life worse. This guy's just a plain 1.2 per. Considering a crow is a 1.25, this is technically below. This one's awful too. It skips your symbols. Not really much of time that you don't want symbols. I mean, you can always get capsules. You can always get things that destroy themselves. Hexa hoarding, on the other hand, is fine in the early game it is a three per and in the early game you generally want to take symbols the downside of taking a kind of crummy symbol in the early game is not as bad as being forced to skip symbols in the early game it's definitely a bearable hex but only barely hexamidas does have some synergies coin synergies with pyrus king midas coin on a string if you're taking it you generally know what you're doing hell if you have uh, triple coins it functions very similarly to a beehive but without some synergies i think it's up in c hexa t Medium also has its place. Sometimes you want commons like cats or crabs or cultists. I don't think it's as good as Hexamidas, but if you take it, you usually know what you're doing. So I'd put it right here. And this is the hex that makes adjacent symbols sometimes worth zero. Also good in the early game. I'd say worse than Hexa Hoarding. Eh, maybe a little better than Hexa Hoarding in the early game. Not by much though. I'd say right there. Highlander, it's worth six. I mean, 95% of the times I see it, I take it. A six per is always going to help out the build. Sure, if it's a very rare, it's like, oh, I wish it was Golden Arrow or Diamond. But a lot of the time, it's better than Eldritch Creature. Eldritch Creature does get better than it over time though and the fact that you can't build around it or synergize with it anyway does probably limit it to b tier i think i'd put it at a little worse than b you take it all the time but you're just whelmed when you take it honey is a three per that's worth rare that can be thin from your deck if you're not going honeys or just a good addition to the bear beehive strategy i wouldn't take this without a bear or a bee unless if you know that's the only rare being offered but it does feel really good to get if you have that strategy going hooligan's a great mid game item you're generally going to stumble on an urn in the early to mid game i wouldn't say it's that good obviously you're not going to build around it and destroying a tomb with it kind of feels bad because i don't mind the tomb in the first place i'd say right above bartender makes sense hustling capsule pays out a lot more than it may appear take seven spins the payoff but then it's just basically a one per that doesn't take up spot on your board if you get this at rent payment six or seven it's going to be worth 30 40 50 coins over the course of the game but it's not as much of a game changer as essence capsule capsule can be so i'd put it right here item capsule is a bit of a shit show it never feels bad to take it because the items don't really hurt you and if they somehow do you can disable them but most of the time it is a bit of a nothing burger low risk low reward i'd put it just below honey jellyfish is awesome i mean it's a twoper uncommon that if you get a diver you can get a removal capsule for free and removing it later is basically free because it pays the removal capsule right back it's a no risk symbol in that sense i'll put it right above anchor and below highlander joker makes the suits go around but he's not terrible to pick on his own i mean he's a three per that can synergize with comedian as well he can also save a failed suits build and give it a second wind and if you have one or two suits it's still advantageous to ditch the suits build joker's not going to be adjacent to them often enough to justify their one per value i think i put him in mid c tier Key is a fine early pick because you can always find a lockbox early or if you don't get lucky enough, you'll probably find a safe later on. If you're really lucky, you get a treasure chest or mega chest. Wouldn't count on it though. But being an early game item that removes itself a lot does make it pretty nice, but certainly never life-changing to have a key. I think I just put it in low C tier. King Midas is way more fun than he is good. Obviously, if triple coins, you just win with them. Or if you have coin on a string, he becomes a four per. I found that going King Midas with a pirate is just going to flood your deck with coins. So you either need two pirates or some other way to get rid of coins. Most of the time, he is the easiest skip of my life. But when he does show up, he's fine. Just the fact that you have to skip him most of the time does make him quite bad. Light bulb, great early game symbol, is a one per that removes itself and gives a little more money along the way. If you can get it for a diamond or amethyst, you're 
eating good in the mid game. Definitely wouldn't go out of my way to pick it if I didn't have either of those though. And they're both pretty hard to get. But for his early game capabilities alone, I think it's good to put in mid C tier. Lockbox is pretty terrible. Sure, it can help you get rid of a key, but it's the least satisfying outcome. And you never want to take a lockbox without a key. Obviously, there's the lock pick item, which should not be discounted. If you have lock pick, lockbox is a four or five per with a lot of variance. I see this as being just above dove. Lucky capsule can be a run winner if you get it early. And there's not many times I pass up a lucky capsule. Just being offered a rare for sure is good at all stages of the game. You would think that later on luck odds become so good that you're going to see a rare every spin, but that's just not true. This is easily the best capsule. I'd probably put it up over Beehive. Magic Key is a great way to tickle that gambling dopamine. You take it and then pray the next chest you see is an expensive one. Or you're relieved because you've been sitting on a treasure chest or mega chest forever and now you finally have a way to get rid of it. I feel like I have to almost compare this one to rares. Like I would rather have a bartender than a Magic Key, but I would rather have a Magic Key than a Zaroff. Just cause, I mean, it's a twoper, you keep it around until you stumble on a mega chest and then you get a shit ton of money. Magpie is pretty ass. It's the same payment as Crow, but it does have the tax evasion synergy as well. Checkered Flag is really good with it. Still think it's god awful, but at least sometimes it can be buffed by symbols. Martini is honey, but in a worse build. Sure, Dame is better than Bear in a vacuum, but you're gonna be seeing Dames way less often due to being rare. It's more often just gonna sit there as a three per, get upgraded to a four per with happy hour, and that's it. I would say that puts it right in the middle of the road, right below the bartender. Matryoshka is pretty okay to take early. It's slow like coal and doesn't grow as fast as coal, but having a forper that you picked in the early game can be nice for deck consistency in the mid to late game. Just like coal, you really only want to take it when you have a great early start and are concerned about your mid game ability. But if you don't have that, it is a very disappointing uncommon. I think I'd put it just above bubble. Mega chest is rarely bad. It's a three per with a huge upside. It's practically a better honey. Sure, it's very rare, but I basically basically never pass this up. Even if you get a normal key, the 100 coin payout is great, and of course, don't get me started on magic key. Definitely put this above Eldritch Creature. I probably would put it above Bronze Arrow too. Blow Beehive, but that's close. Midas Bomb has three legitimate uses. The first one being, if you are in desperate need of money right now to make rent, it can give you your money now at the expense of money later. You just hope you get to make it up. The second being, your deck is filled with a lot of kind of BS going into the mid game. You over selected things and you're just kind of looking to thin and then figure out where to build from there. And the third is if you want a meme, which is a very powerful symbol. I feel obligated to take this on stream when I see it, but if I'm not streaming, it's most of the time bad. The amount of times it's been in the corner or hit something like an arrow that doesn't even pay out is unfathomable. Hitting a dud, even though it's a good thing, still feels like it's a letdown because it doesn't pay out money. And if your strategy depends on adjacency bonuses, then it's more than likely to ruin it somehow. I'd probably put this in low D tier. Milk is an all right early game symbol. You take it, you know it's gonna disappear, so it's not gonna have a long-term eff effect on your deck. After the very, very early game, it's pretty bad, unless you have a crazy cat build going. Still, I'd prefer a milk over a key, because you're gonna guarantee it would go. But I don't think I'd go any higher than that. Maybe over Martini. Mine is just like Golem. You only take it when you have a Geologist. It is complete ass otherwise. The difference is this is a rare, and it feels much worse to waste a rare on geologist food. Because the downside a rare has that Uncommon doesn't have is when you get your first rare, it could be this thing. If you get an early lucky capsule, it could be this thing stunting your growth. But it is really good geologist food, so I think I'll put it in very low C tier. Miner is such a bait. The problem with Miner is that everything he eats will then result in your deck proudly being worse. Let's say he eats an ore in the early game. He's probably gonna drop a one per behind. You don't want extra pearls in your deck unless you have a diver, but you probably don't when you take miners. Or it eats a big ore, it takes a single two per, and then it will turn it into two one pers, which is infinitely worse. Every time I've taken a miner, I have lost the game. At least Hex of Destruction sometimes can destroy a dud. Miner is just gonna make your life worse. F. Monkey's an okay early game symbol. I mean, you don't really want to get the banana because leaving behind a banana peel is a similar effect to the miner. It just leaves behind a garbage one per that you're probably not getting rid of. Eating a coconut half is only okay, 
you're basically losing a two per and then keeping around a one per eating a coconut is the dream i wouldn't count on it though and it's always a hassle to have a monkey around with mrs fruit you're just praying the monkey doesn't do anything so i'd put him i don't want to put him in between the dwarf and his beer but this is where i'd rank it i think i'll just slide him over one put him next to his banana yeah he can be happy moon is probably one of the easiest symbols to win with it's very frequent that you're just gonna see wolves in the mid game or quigley the wolf for dogs and the wolves or rabbits in the mid game because that can come an easy three per the fact that it takes uncommon symbols and makes them incredible well is is just great not to mention there's so many rabbit builds that can go to the moon no pun intended golden carrot lucky carrot even without any of those it's awesome definitely s tier probably just below Beastmaster though because it really only has two symbols is going to affect moon owl is not a real build mouse eats cheese sometimes buffs ninja and that's it at face value is better than the goldfish but there are two ways to get rid of a goldfish and no ways to get rid of a mouse without removal capsule i've taken a mouse a couple times out of desperation it's better than a dwarf but it's still terrible if you're taking a mouse you're gonna be sad if you're taking mrs fruits you've probably won the game you're gonna have so many fruits early that will just feed into a great build and then you can feed her easily i mean there's seeds there's so many uncommon fruits that are good peaches We'll double feed Mrs. Fruit generally. And don't get me started on compost heap. Whenever symbols get destroyed, Mrs. Fruit eats more. It's tough to say if she's better than the geologist. They're both amazing eaters. Yeah, I think this is about right. Ninja has mouse synergy, katana synergy, and that's it. There's a reason why the ninja synergy is so hard to pull off. And that's because it's ass. You obviously don't want him in the late game. Don't want him in the mid game. Early game, it's like, yeah, I can dream. I'll get some sort of katana or mouse energy, but it never happens. If he is one of your first uncommons, it's always a disappointment because you know you're going to go nowhere with them. F. Omelette is better when it comes from a frying pan. If you're just taking a straight up omelette, it's not going to be that good. If you don't have frying pan, it's just a three per that has some not often adjacency synergies. And if you have only one of them, the ceiling is going to be pretty low. I'm inclined to put this just over milk because the credit for the frying pan synergy goes to eggs, not really to omelets. Orange is a very fine symbol to take in mid game. It's worth two. And then there's so many ways to pivot out of it. I mean, there's three S tier symbols that love the orange. So having an orange set that up is fantastic. This can be an important reminder of how it's not always about the symbol itself but what sort of strategy it feeds into and it feeds into great strategies so it's a great symbol or feeds into exactly one great strategy and that's geologist one is much less than three but it is a double eat for the geologist but it has the same problem coconut has you wouldn't want to take it anticipating a geologist because it's a one per i'm thinking i basically never grab a raw ore. I suppose I like it more than a cherry because of its potential, but it's usually just as disappointing. Owl is also disappointing. Its ceiling is moon and Beastmaster, and even then, you would much rather have wolf and rabbit. I basically never feel good about taking an owl, but it is better than the other garbage birds because it has synergies. So it's going to be high F tier instead of low F tier. Oysters are meant to be eaten. It, however, is a really good food for two major eaters. I mean, it can be a huge engine for geologist and is a double eat for diver. It's completely ass otherwise, but it is incredible with two S tier strategies. That's enough to put it into low C tier. And you can actually make a direct comparison to mine, right? Mine is incredible with one S tier strategy. An oyster is incredible with one S tier strategy and a good eat for another S tier strategy. Peach is phenomenal. It kind of has the jellyfish effect. So peach is definitely better than orange just because it comes um, a double eat sometimes. But I do admit it's not that much better. I think they split the item capsule pretty fairly. We all know Pearl to be god awful. It's one of the first things I remove in a game, but it does at least get eaten by two S tier symbols. Even when I have them though, I often neglect taking a single pearl, unless if I'm way above rent. It also at least has the light bulb synergy for early game, but I would still never take this. I think this is the tippy top of F tier. Never ever take this but if you happen to have it at least it can feed into some decent stuff pear is a slightly better amethyst as two things that buff it instead of one but not that much better it is cute though unless if it's really early pinata is suicide sure the toddler will eat it for a lot but if you already have a full deck it's gonna take the toddler a long time to eat it it's gonna clog up the deck and it's gonna pay out 
effectively way less than what you would think. I would never take a pinata without a toddler either, and it kind of has the same problem the cow has. At the end of the day, it's making one purse. So unless if you get lucky to get rid of those one purse and get your payment real fast, you're gonna be sad. And it's a one per itself, so I'd put it below Cal. I think I'd put it below King Midas, even. Pirate's fun because of the noise he makes, but he might be the worst very rare. I mean, it takes a long time to get a very rare. You're probably not gonna have the coin at that time. You may still have an anchor or two. Sometimes you have an orange. It's best ability is to eat treasure chests, because then they'll also pay out a lot when they get eaten. But it's actually harder to feed a pirate than you think. King Midas makes too many coins, I think the best feeder is actually Hexamitis because of how infrequent it makes the coins. Like, Pirate can actually catch up with it. Pirate seems like it can be good, but there's no times it's obviously won me a game. It's been a decent symbol at best. I think I'm going to put it just above orange. It's still B tier, but definitely the worst of very rare. Present is probably my favorite thing to feed to a toddler. It has a large payout when eaten. And if this toddler somehow gets unlucky, it'll still remove itself in the meantime. If there's a ton of empties, it's great to take just like coal. It'll pay out exactly as much as the empty it would have replaced, but then it'll give a nice bonus by the end of it. I like it more than key for that reason, probably a little above oyster too. Not much further. Pufferfish is jellyfish light. I'd much rather have a removal capsule than a reroll capsule, but it's still nice to have. But it does only feed into one S tier strategy. I would put it just below orange. Rabbit Fluff is one of my favorite first uncommons to see, except for Lucky Capsule. I still know how to quantify the luck odds it gives, but it does feel very good. And not to mention with the lint rollers, it's very plausible to remove this thing. I think I'd put it just above bear. Rabbit is a slow uncommon, but it has the Matryoshka effect, where if you want to take an uncommon that will eventually be great in the mid game, Rabbit's your go-to. Becomes a threeper, which is better than most uncommons, and then has incredible moon synergy. Beastmaster's great with it, and don't get me started on golden and lucky carrots. Those are phenomenal with rabbits. I would probably put this over Dame just because of how many runs that rabbits have done well. Rain is probably the worst flower buff. It's an uncommon, it is worth two, but when a rain is next to a flower, that pays out the same as a bee being worth next to a flower. So it's only better when it's not next to a flower and it doesn't have the ability to buff beehives and honey. Still, it can be nice to pick if you still have your flower in early game. Maybe it can give you a little stepping stone into the sun strat. And if you have rain and sun, well then congrats, it's 10xing a flower. That is good. But because it's less versatile, I'll move it a little higher actually, but it's not at B tier. This seems right. Removal Capsule is nearly as good as Lucky Capsule. The value of keeping your deck close to size 20 cannot be overstated. And this lets you do that. I take Removal Capsule 95 plus percent of the time. And when I don't, I always feel disappointed that I don't. The only thing is Lucky Capsule can still kind of make a run. Where Removal Capsule's help is a bit more subtle. Reroll Capsule is something I should try using more often. Because having a reroll for the rare item selection in between rent payments is very valuable. Having one more reroll to get the rare of your dreams can make your run. But I've been neglecting it lately, so I don't think my rating for this is going to be that good. I'm going to put it as below chemical seven, but I may change my mind on this in the future. It's kind of weird because I think it's better than item capsule, but whenever they're offered together, I generally pick item capsule because I think item capsule is more fun. Robin Hood is a really bad rare. If he's just sitting there naked, he's worth two and a half on average. Comically low for a rare. He does have a lot of synergies such as checkered flag, tax evasion, anything he eats. The arrow buffs are probably the most common thing. Eating the billionaire is probably the best outcome. All in all, it feels pretty bad to be forced to take him. I'd put him above a chicken, but only barely. Ruby is emerald, but red. There's no discussion here. Safe is a blessing to see if I take an early key and don't find a lockbox, but taking a safe naked is a terrible idea. It's worth one on average, and you have to just pray you'll find some way to break it. It only feels okay to get it with a magic key, like you barely broke even. I think that's enough to put it into high D tier. Sand dollar is worse than jellyfish and pufferfish, but not by much. You can equate the 10 coins it pays out to a wealthy capsule compared to the reroll capsule and removal capsule. That in mind, I'd put it at the bottom of B tier. Sapphire is worth two and it basically has one S tier synergy. Dame with it is okay. Not something you want to build around though. And I'm noticing gems are worse than fruits because one, there's fewer gems and two, the essences for fruits are much better than the ones for 
gems. Back in the day, there used to be a lot more gems, but I guess they removed them because they were all kind of samey. I think they were, if they were still in the game nowadays, they'd be uh, given more modern uses, more interesting uses. But because there's not that many gems, it's going to be just below coconut half. Seed was great that one time it was a 20 per. Otherwise, I would never take this without a Mrs. Fruit. And then sometimes it gives flowers, so it's not a great thing. You can take it in early game in hopes to get an uncommon fruit, which is enough to put it over cherry, <laughs> cherry, but only barely. Shiny Pebbles luck odds matter less and less to me nowadays. 1.1x is a very small number. It can at least be eaten by geologist, but that's it. This guy's basically a pearl, but he'll still be one tier above, but there's not many symbols separating the two. Silver Arrow is great with any run. If you see it, you take it because you know your build's gonna improve. I would put it just below the moon and just above the eaters. But it is circumstantial. Obviously, you want, would want the eaters if your deck has a lot of those things. Sloth is a twoper on paper, but disappointing in reality. I just want to get checkered flag sloth to have it become a fourper because that's the only re real way to have it be worth it. Otherwise, it's got Beastmaster, and that's it. Outside of Beastmaster and checkered flag, sloth has nothing, so I'm inclined to put it in high D tier. Snail is a god awful diver food. You'll take it, it'll feed the diver, and it'll give you probably no coins before the diver does so at least the other symbols have the decency to give you some coins so it's definitely worse than cherry i'd probably even put it below mouse and cheese but above dwarf and beer and the last of the suits just leaving them in sheep's head order spirit is a disappointing rare to take it's like yeah sure i'll take the free money but i'm really hoping for a rare that would change the game it's only 24 free money as well and it blocks the space of a two per a three per so it's really only a net gain of maybe 16 helps a little bit to have a witch laying around but all in all it's probably just better than a present strawberry is the fruit version of the emerald and ruby except it can be buffed by two things which does help at least a little but not by much <laughs> it's pretty close to the apple all things considered sun can make a run 5xing is the most powerful multiplier besides midas bomb and if you happen to have your flower from early game you always take a sun and very often you'll take a sun after the flower is gone and then take flowers back that's how good it is it is only flowers though so it's very high risk high reward so it's not as good as the moon it's probably not even as good as beehive but i will put it above the bronze arrow just because you can genuinely make a run off of sun Hell, it's even better than Mega Chest. Target's okay. It's a twoper that's probably going to get destroyed later and probably going to pay out a little bit. You can take it mid-game knowing that you're going to see some arrow later and the target will eventually be destroyed. But a lot of the times it takes longer than you would hope to get destroyed. And it's sitting around surrounded by threepers as a, just a naked twoper being like, please kill me. I also wouldn't want to take it in the late game when I have arrows because of how slow it is. It's pretty much only a mid-game pickup. I would put it slightly below Big Urn as far as direct comparison goes i think that's reasonable mm, but it does get destroyed by way more things than bigger and i'm happier about taking a bronze arrow than i am a hooligan so i guess it actually is a little better tdm capsule is definitely the worst capsule i pretty much only take it for its five free money because it's going to replace something that would give two money woo net gain of three money every dollar counts looking for common symbols is a very rare thing I would say cultists and crabs are most common. Cats are up there, but if I'm already popping off on a cat build, then I probably don't need TD Capsule to help me. And the vast majority of the time, I'm not even looking for common symbols anyway, so I'm probably just making my next item selection worse. I'll put it in between spirit and present. Thief is hard to say whether it's good or not. If you take him naked, he's a threeper until he gets caught. He has tax evasion synergy. And then there's three things that reasonably target it. It's basically a higher risk gambler. And if you take a Zoroff or a bounty hunter as a catch a thief, then you're stuck with a Zoroff or a bounty hunter. One of which is terrible. The other can be okay sometimes, but it is going to overstay his welcome pretty quickly. I'd put him just above a dove. Three-sided dice is the single best early game symbol you can have, at least for early game. You take it because you know the money it's going to give you in the early game is going to cascade into a better mid game, which will cascade into a better late game. If you get very far ahead of rent in the early game, it allows you to be a lot more patient for good stuff or for your holes to grow into diamonds or your Matryoshkas to grow into four purrs. Even though cat has way higher potential, I would still take a three side die over a cat in the early game but only the early game. I think as a whole, a cat is better. And this doesn't even have the removal aspect of the anchor, but I'm still gonna put it as above the anchor. 
Does it go above the jellyfish too? Yeah, because every time I see a three side die in early game, I take the three side die. Time capsule is just fun. It's so hard to properly evaluate this, but if you're playing optimally, then you should have things that easily remove themselves in your destroyed symbols pile. So it's gonna be just another void thing or random capsule. And I would say a random destructible is probably low A tier. It only gets bad if you had like a bunch of eaters in the early game. And that's another reason I kind of avoid early game eaters. Of the early game eaters, Toddler is the best. It's so versatile. I mean, it has candy. It can justify a pinata. Bubbles are great eats. Bar of soap makes a ton of them. And present is good to eat. If you get a jack-o'-lantern, it's great. It can pivot into a hooligan in the mid game. It is a very, very, very good early game symbol. I think I'd put him just above the pirate. Tomb is hard to calculate because 5% of making a spirit is so damn low, it might not even exist. But it does exist. It's just like some games it exists a lot, some games it doesn't exist at all. It's basically a glorified threeper that I don't feel bad about being smashed by a hooligan or a grave robber. It's definitely not reliable enough to synergize with Witch, which is his only real synergy. Most of the time, I'm just hoping to find something better. I'll put it close to the Big Urn. The Big Urn might be better just because it's less rare. There is a huge jump in quality from treasure chest over safe, partially because it's just worth two in the meantime. There's also a huge jump from Mega Chest to Treasure Chest because Mega Chest is worth three in the meantime. I think it makes sense to kind of just split the difference and put it into low B tier. There are many rares I would prefer over that guy. Turtle is basically just diver food. It's most likely just going to be a glorified snail. Feeds the diver, does nothing before it gets to that point. But it is better than a snail. Urn is okay because Hooligan is okay. If I have an early Hooligan, I would take an Urn. If I have a mid-game Hooligan, I would not take an Urn. I think it's just worse than a flower and just better than a goldfish. The voids are so similar, I'll, re I'll review them in one go. The early game help where they give a little bit of extra money for the empties before destroying themselves is kind of negligible because you would much rather have an uncommon early that constantly pays out two money or even three money. Having your uncommon get rid of it itself is quite sad. Its best purpose is mid to late game where it just gives one payout of eight coins and goes about its life. I would say it's really close in value to item capsule. I'd say just above. The fruit's the best because it can be buffed by two things. Stone second best because it can be buffed by two things, but one of them's light bulb. And the animal one only has Beastmaster. Watermelon is basically diamond light, except it doesn't have a coal equivalent. Seed does not count, but it can also be buffed by two things. So that alone makes it really, really good. I'd say S tier just below Sun. Wealthy Capsule I've decided is worse than Reroll Capsule despite my play, but not by much. Since I still take it pretty much every time I see it, I'd say it's low A tier. It's nice to see, but ultimately kind of low impact. But the vast majority of the time, it's right to pick it. Wild Card is a no-brainer. It takes the best thing and copies its value. Why wouldn't it be good? Especially good with arrows, if you can have the arrow pointing to the best symbol and the wild card. Makes the wild card incredible. I do think one wild card isn't as run winning as these top four symbols though. Because it depends so heavily on the strength of the deck. If your best symbol is a threeper, wild card is just another threeper. If you have a good deck that wants to be great, that's where wild card shines. And I think that puts it right where it is. Wine is a really good uncommon. It's not as instant at being a threeper as a five side die but it is faster than being a rabbit. It just doesn't have the synergy aspect. It's got Chef, which is pretty good. And ideally, I wouldn't want a dwarf to drink it. Happy Hour is also okay. I would probably put this just above Cat, which is an oddball. Cat is obviously the best thing to buff with it, but a witch alone is not enough to justify a cat build. It can be a good way to turn a good cat build into a great cat build. And that's probably its biggest strength. Witch Apple is only an okay combo. You have a two per and a three per that sometimes becomes a two and a six per, which is terrible for two rares. And hexes usually do more harm than good. Still, I think I prefer Witch over Zaroff, but below Billionaire. So I'll put her right there. And finally, the Wolf. Wolf Moon is an incredibly powerful strategy. Wolf Beastmaster is great. Quickly, the Wolf is a common item that is pretty much an instant take because Wolves are uncommon. And if you can build your run around an uncommon symbol, you're doing great. Wolf is a lot like orange, actually. You can just take it as a plain two per in mid game, expecting to get one of a few powerful synergies with it. I think I'd even put it above peach. Yeah, and that's where it's gonna go. Right above peach, right below honey. 
that's the tier list. I'm gonna do some last second shifting of stuff. For example, I think golden egg is better than treasure chest. I think I'd put wealthy capsule over time capsule because of the ability to get back stuff that you wish you hadn't. I'm also gonna walk back reroll capsule, at least a little. I think I'm a little biased on the B placement. I just want it to be king of the B tier. I think right below the voids is right where it belongs. I think I like Joker better than the chickens. Definitely better than Robin Hood. I don't know what I was thinking there. Definitely better than Witch. And I'll leave it there. I think Comedian needs a little bit more credit. I would probably take him over the Golden Chest. I think I'll put Spirit over Martini. That's my overall rankings. I think the rankings ended up being decided by how likely is this symbol to help you win the game and by how much. Which is tough because how do you compare something that's likely to help you win the game by little versus something that's unlikely to help you win by, but if it does, it would do it by a lot. Actually, I will bring up cow a good chunk here. And to be honest, the cutoffs between tiers are pretty arbitrary. It's not like there's a huge jump from Bronze Arrow to Eldritch Creature. They're actually really close in value. And same can be said for every lowest of a tier versus highest of another. Let me know what you thought down below. This took a long time to make, so I hope you enjoyed. See you all in the next one. Have a wonderful day and peace.